Hey friends, today we get to play episode 2 of Mycorza. Mycorrhiza, I'm still not really sure how it's pronounced. Regardless, I'm still really excited though because each chapter is basically like its own interactive horror story that you and I get to experience together. And even though we're about to go into door number 2, I know nothing about the plot of this chapter. If you're starting this series on this episode, I really encourage you to go back and watch the first chapter. It's a really creepy story about how a strange plant has completely turned a town upside down. It's got a ton of surprises, great art direction. It's honestly brilliant. Now before we get started, I'd like to say a few things. I think we've talked about this before, but I wanted to say that it's okay to say no to things. Let me explain what I mean by that. Have you ever been in a situation where a friend or a family member has asked you to do something and you know it's going to cause you an intense amount of anxiety? Maybe a bunch of stress? Or you honestly just want to take some time to yourself and it's just not something you really want to do? It's okay to say no. You can still be kind and thank them for asking you, as we all like to feel included every now and again, but don't feel like you have to say yes to something just because you're asked. The people in your lives that love you will understand that. And not only is your personal peace important, but what could be more important than your time? It's the most valuable resource that we have after all. I love you guys. With that being said, here is chapter two of my Corza. Oh, I love the way that that door looks. This is going to be a good chapter. Oh man, I'm excited. Okay. <clears throat> Got a Diet Coke today. A guide to funny faces. This really looks like Junji Ito. That was chapter one. I shot awake, panting heavily, my clothes sticking to my skin due to all the sweat. My eyes darted around the room, but everything was quiet. I seemed to be safe. A nightmare. It seems like I just had a nightmare. There was some kind of animal or monster, and there was some eerie plant. Again, chapter one. I'd forgotten most of the dream, but I knew that it must have been terrifying. The pulsing pain in my head was slowly subsided. I took deep breaths and kept mumbling to myself that it had all been a dream. Nothing more. After calming down, I decided to take another look around the house. The fact that no one was here, even though the lights were on, was still nagging at the back of my mind. A look out of the window confirmed that it was still night. I had either slept for a whole day, or only for a few hours. Well, what's more likely? Considering how tired I felt, it must have been the latter. I left the bedroom to retry the doors, just in case. They were still locked. I really wanted to go home and take a shower. I smelled my clothes and they indeed had started to smell slightly sour. This place seemed to have nothing left to offer. I'd better, I'd be better off out in the streets, even if it was still dark. All I need to do is find a police station. They'd definitely be able to help me. As I wandered around, I grew more and more aware of how big this town was. The buildings were tall and nature was rather scarce. The streets, however, were completely empty. Suddenly, my ears began to pick up the subtle sounds of laughter. The sounds turned to, turned to unease in my empty stomach. It was awfully late for such a public crowd. There wasn't cheering or rounds of applause. Just laughter. Loud and obnoxious laughter that didn't seem to subside or grow. It became louder as I approached the town center. Soon, it turned into a wave of commotion by what sounded to be a massive crowd. They just laughed. And laughed and kept laughing. It sounded dreadful. I was tempted to change course to, to avoid them. Yet this direction was my best bet for finding an inn or a police station. These priorities outweighed my sense of danger. I pressed on. The laughter was bellowing with hundreds of voices until finally I could glimpse the source of the commotion. The crowd gathered around a performer who was doing something to make them laugh. I strained to see the action, peeking through the small gaps between the people while keeping a safe distance. The group was just too dense, I couldn't see any details. Curiosity overwhelmed me and I started pushing through the people. They seemed to melt away without paying attention to me at all. And I'm ad-libbing here. As I approached, I passed a table with books. I couldn't make out their title, but I could see something that resembled a mask on the cover. Paying it no mind, I pressed onward. I couldn't understand what was happening. The performer wasn't making any sounds, I couldn't make out any movement from beyond the crowd either. What was so entertaining? A performer in the middle of the street. 
Finally, I reached the front. But what I saw was the opposite of funny. It was horrifying. Does he have warts in between each of the heads? I wonder if this is a reference to like the different facial expressions that show it's like one of the symbols of like a play or something like that. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. What was wrong with his head? He turned his hip so that everyone in the crowd could have a clear view, as if he didn't want anyone to miss it. Why are people laughing at this? A bystander heard me. I don't know, his face just seems so funny. I mean, look at it. I stared at him in disbelief. He and the others really did seem to find this funny. Were they seeing something that I wasn't? No matter how I looked at it, it didn't seem like anything other than disturbing. I averted my gaze and walked away. I wanted nothing to do with this madness. I continued to comb through the town center while trying to keep my distance from the crowd. Soon, I noticed that the sun had already started to rise, and I still hadn't found anything that even vaguely resembled a police station. It's kind of creepy, isn't it? This is the girl that not only appeared in the intro, but appeared in the first chapter. I imagine that this girl is going to appear in every chapter. Um, reoccurring character, I guess, in such a strange town. I had walked by a girl that was standing nearby. She was watching the crowd from a distance. Yeah, it is. I was glad to hear that someone else was thinking the same. An awkward pause followed. I had been under the impression that she wanted to start up a conversation. Did this girl appear in the intro? Maybe she just appeared in chapter one. I might be uh, remembering incorrectly. But I guess that wasn't the case. My stomach broke the silence. Are you hungry? Blood shot to my face. It was true that I was feeling starved. Swallowing my pride, I nodded. Have a sandwich with me. You can have it. Or I have a sandwich with me. You can have it. Are you sure? No worries. I'm not hungry anyways. I had to hold myself back as to not lunge onto it. But I kept my cool and I ate it cautiously as to not embarrass myself. Some of my strength began to return to me. In the meanwhile, I decided to ask her about this town. Sorry, I don't really know my way around here that well. Oh, so you're not from here? No, not really. Maybe I could help you look. I'm feeling a bit uneasy about being alone here anyways. I glanced back in the direction of the laughing crowd. Sure, I would really appreciate that. I'm Scott, by the way. I'm May. Nice to meet you. We set off to look for help. Love these backgrounds. Gorgeous. The idea, to, the idea to call someone I knew from May's phone came up, but she didn't have it on her, unfortunately. And you do that in chapter one, I think. We approached several people to ask them for directions, but all of them seemed to ignore us. I tried to make some small talk with May every now and again, but her replies were always short and didn't leave much room for follow-ups. But she perked up when I asked her about her family. I have a sister. At first I thought that would be all I would get out of her, but she continued after a short pause. She's been home more recently. Usually she'd leave early and return late or not return home at all for several days. Her job is really important, so I guess it makes sense. But I was really happy when she told me that she wouldn't go to work for a while. I assumed she was finally able to request some time off. But she continued to work even while at home. May hung her head. It seemed like I had touched on a sensitive topic. I thought of ways to console her or cheer her up, but I couldn't come up with anything to say. Since I didn't have any siblings, it was hard to relate, but it seemed like she really loved her sister. I could actually relate more to May's sister. Just as her, I too barely have been home due to my work. And just like her, I'd likely be working even if I was home. But as opposed to May's sister, I didn't have anyone who was expecting me back home. Hmm, completely lives alone? Interesting. Um, does he have any family in the area? At all? Maybe family that would be checking up on him, calling him, texting him in a group chat? You know, who knows? I decided against poking any further and instead shifted my focus back to asking people for directions. Without much luck. Oddly enough, it was as if they were all going in the same direction. The town center. Do you think they're going to see that performer? Silence. Maybe she just hadn't heard me? I turned around to ask her again, but she was nowhere to be seen. Just as I finished that thought, I felt a presence behind me. I slowly turned around. Oh my god. Chunks of his face are missing, missing and his eyes are 
stapled open? What the hell? What do you think? Do I look funny? What? No, get away from me. I took a few steps back, almost afraid the man would lunge at me. But he didn't. He just stood there. I see. Maybe I didn't do it quite right. And with that, he walked off disappointed. He took a bite out of his pocket and started flipping through it. Or took a book out of his pocket and started flipping through it. Bite. For some weird reason, he seemed familiar. Okay, he took a book out of his pocket. There was a book at the town center. Is it something that the performer might be selling? Maybe how to be funny? Uh, a joke book of some kind that's causing people to go mad? For some weird reason, he seemed familiar. This town was giving me the creeps. I need to get out of here as fast as I could. But as I turned around, I saw that most of the people walking by had distorted their faces in one way or another. It was as if a virus had spread while we were looking for help. This was madness. I need to get out of here, but where to? And where was May? I was getting kind of worried. All right, so here's our first choice. I took a look around and thought about what to do. Stay on the main street. It should be easier to find May or a police station. Go through the back streets and avoid attracting anyone on one of the tension. I say back streets. Staying on the main street was too dangerous. The fewer of them I came into contact with, the better. But the moment I stepped into the dark alleyway, a bad feeling welled up inside of me. Was I really that much safer here than out in the streets? I turned around and looked back at the people walking by. Some shot glances my way, perhaps because I was one of the few people around whose face looked normal. This made me nervous. I turned back toward the alleyway. Whatever was awaiting me here couldn't be worse than being surrounded by all of those madmen out there. My heartbeat accelerated every time I rounded a corner. I soon noticed that the back street layout was quite elaborate. There were no dead ends and it seemed to stretch on forever. I should have glimpsed an exit leading to the main street long ago. Was I just walking in circles? Right as I was about to turn another corner, I saw them. I froze in place. The person on the left spoke to me. It was the voice of a boy. Oh, you're normal. His words caught me off guard. What did he mean by normal? And what was up with those masks? Uh, yeah. I tried to sound confident, but my voice shook slightly. The other child spoke. Her voice sounded like a girl's voice. I'm Amy, and this is my brother Lanny. Amy and Lanny from chapter one? Okay, wait a minute. Are each of these chapters a different version of the same town? Like an alternate universe or something? Theories, I'm just, just spitballing. She gestured to the smaller kid next to her. We're hiding from the other people, those with weird faces. You're hiding from them too, right? My body slowly relaxed. It seemed like they really were just normal kids. Why are they wearing those masks? Those masks were still freaking me out, though. Yeah, I am. Do you know we can escape from here or maybe find some help? No, unfortunately not. I thought I knew a good way through these back streets, but I think we're lost. Not because of me, though. She wanted to... Amy punched his arm. Ow! Hey! If we had turned right as I said we should have, we wouldn't be lost anymore. That was a dead end, you dimwit. You just didn't see it because your mask is too big. Lanny rubbed his shoulder and started sulking. Why are you wearing those masks in the first place? Some people with those weird faces have been... Well, they've been using people with normal faces as material. Lanny flinched as Amy muttered those words. Material? It seemed like they had seen some terrible things. Hiding in these alleyways had been a good idea. <sighs> Alright, we should probably move on. There has to be a way out of here. I'll stick with you. That way it'll be safer. I couldn't see their faces, but, their body lang but by their body language I could tell that they were relieved. I too was happy that there were other normal people out here. While we were walking, I tried to find out more about the siblings and what they knew about the situation. Our parents hadn't come back since yesterday night. We didn't think much of it and assumed they'd be back late. But when we woke up, they still weren't there. We wanted to ask some neighbors for help, but they weren't home either. I thought we should wait, but... I thought that was a dumb idea. If they hadn't come back yet, then something must have happened to them. And you want to be a scientist? Oh, yeah, and your idea turned out so great. And I never said I wanted to be a scientist. I still don't know. Yeah, yeah, or artist, whatever. I tried to steer the conversation and stop a fight from breaking out. Those feel like some pretty contrasting job choices. They do, don't they? I guess both pe- I, 
I guess both help people in their own ways. At least that's what one neighbor of ours claims whenever she fights with another neighbor. We have two neighbors who are close to our family and they... I froze. So did the siblings. Someone was there, just around the corner. I jerked my head around trying to find a place to hide. For a second, I considered that they could be someone normal. Someone just like us. Someone who was just as freaked out by whatever was going on in the city as we were. But I didn't want to take any unnecessary risks, and I especially didn't want to put these kids in danger. I spotted a big garage garbage container not too far from us and quickly pushed Amy and Lanny toward it. We made it just in time. Amy held her breath. Lanny was fidgeting slightly. No, he was trembling. I was afraid that he would make too much noise, but he managed to pull himself together. Silence. Was the person just standing there looking down the alleyways we were in? Or were they already gone and we just hadn't heard them leave? I managed to suppress my curiosity and decided not to peer around the container. Lanny, apparently, couldn't. I was about to stop him and pull him back, but it was already too late. He had already peeked out of our hiding spot. His body relaxed slightly and he spoke in a hushed tone. Amy, it's Frederick, our neighbor. Amy perked up. It seemed like they knew this person. As Amy saw my puzzled expression, she started to explain. Don't worry, Frederick is the neighbor we were talking about. He's a bit of a nerd, since he's a research... Frederick from chapter one. Okay. Each chapter is going to have these same cast of characters. I'm convinced this is like... Alternate realities of a town. But he's cool otherwise. The last remark stung a bit, seeing as I was a researcher myself, but I decided to ignore it. Here, have this, just in case. I'll go talk to him. Lanny shoved his mask into my hands and jumped up out of our cover. I was about to grab him and stop him, but my hands gripped empty air. Amy jumped up as well and ran after him, likely realizing how dangerous his idea was. I hesitated. But just for a second. There was no way I could let those two go out there by themselves. If something went wrong, I had to be there to protect them. I hesitantly put on the mask Lanny had given me and stepped out of our hiding spot. Lanny had since called out to Frederick and was now approaching him. I knew that guy looked familiar. I knew it was the hair that I recognized. I froze when I saw him. That was the guy I had met earlier. And his face was still ravaged as before. How Lanny had recognized him was beyond me. Lanny stopped a few feet from Frederick. Are you alright? Your face... Did they do this? Frederick had a puzzled look on his face at first, but his expression soon softened. Oh, that? How do I look? Terrible. Why can't they just leave us normal people alone? Frederick's expression darkened. My feet moved by themselves and I was quickly approaching Lanny. Lanny was under the misconception that someone else had done this to Frederick, but I knew that he was one of them. I quickly overtook Amy, who had stopped at a safe distance and stood between Frederick and Lanny. Hmm? Frederick glanced at me. It seemed like he didn't recognize me because of the mask. I was about to tell him to leave us when suddenly... I gasped for air. My stomach? He kicked me in the stomach. Wait, what? I could hear Amy gasp behind me as my knees gave in. My insides grew hot as I held onto my belly, my view fixed on the gray asphalt below me. Oh my god, that's... Cr so creepy. Then I heard Lanny cry out. I jerked my head up, still unable to get up due to the pain. Frederick had grabbed Lanny and was pulling him back toward the way Frederick had come from. I was hoping to find someone whose face was in, was in an impeccable shape, just as yours. You'll make for some nice material. Hey, let go! Lanny was struggling with all his might, but Frederick was stronger. He picked Lanny up and... He threw him against the wall. Lanny's head collided with the hard surface, and his body went limp. Before I was able to heave myself up, hey, Amy had apparently freed herself from her frozen state. She ran past me and toward Frederick. Stop! Let him go! She must have known that winning against an adult was impossible for her, but her judgment was clouded by her desire to save her brother. All because I had been too careless, and I had let Frederick hit me. But before Amy could throw herself onto Frederick, he turned around and hit her with his back hand. Jeez. She staggered to the side, her mask flying off her face. Her expression was twisted in pain. Frederick froze as he saw what was under the mask. A normal face. Oh wow, two potential donors. A sick grin formed on his dismembered face. My feet finally stopped wobbling and I managed to stand up. I had to help Amy, otherwise Frederick would take her too. I charged forward as Frederick started approaching her and was about to tackle him when... Once again, a hot feeling spread throughout my stomach. The difference was that he hadn't kicked me this time. I stumbled backwards 
and looked down. Blood. My feet gave in once again. Frederick was holding a knife. He had stabbed me. Right, where was I? He fixed his eyes at Amy, who was staring back at him, frozen in fear. Hmm, carrying two might be too difficult, but I don't want to leave you here like this either. Ah, I got it. He started rummaging through his pockets shortly after he pulled out something small. I glanced at Amy. She had tears in her eyes. My brain was screaming that I had to help her, but my body wouldn't move. I had lost too much blood. Having a funny face is good and all, but I wanted to approach this from a scientific perspective. There had to be a way to capitalize on this new trend. Maybe I could finally win a prize or two. Coincidentally, I found some odd mushrooms not too long ago. After some experiments, I discovered that they had potential to influence someone's facial arrangement. So I went ahead and made this. He held up something that looked like a small pill. Amy started to crawl backwards, but her back soon hit a wall. Admittedly, oh god, this is not going to be good. Mushrooms and a pill. Admittedly, I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. That's where you come in. He was now standing right in front of Amy, sorry, I got the hiccups a little bit, and bent down. You should thank me. Many people attain face comedy enlightenment, as I'll call it. Maybe I'll be able to sell as many books as the most hilarious one. The guy in the center? Selling the books? Two and two together? He jerked forward and grabbed Amy's face, trying to force the pill into her mouth. I tried crawling toward them, but almost all my strength had left me. Amy was trying her best to keep Frederick off, but he was too strong. Her muffled screams were heart-wrenching. And then she gulped. Frederick stepped back, satisfied. All right, let's see. It should start any second now. This is not going to be good. I closed my eyes. I could tell that Amy was flailing in pain. She tried to scream, but all that came out was a deep gurgle. After a few more... <clears throat> After a few more painful seconds, it stopped. All went quiet. Hmm. Well, the face looks all right. But it seems like I have to tweak it some more before it's distribution ready. I heard footsteps. Frederick had picked Lanny back up and was now leaving the alleyway. My eyes were still firmly closed. I didn't want to look. I didn't want to see what happened to Amy. But I had to know if she was really dead or if she could still be saved. I slowly opened my eyes. Wait a minute. Does this have anything to do with the plant from chapter one? Why did this have to happen to them? Why hadn't I been able to help them? Amy! She didn't respond. I looked down the alleyway. There was no trace of Lanny or Frederick. They were gone. As and soon I would die too. I was steadily losing blood and there was no way anyone would find me and help me. I closed my eyes. As my consciousness faded, I felt a small sting in my back as if something had stabbed me. It was barely noticeable, and then everything went dark. Okay, not the happiest ending. Um, let's see what happens if we go to the town square again. Alright, now we're gonna stay on the main street. I felt uneasy around these people, but I didn't want to negatively impact my chances of finding help. Quickly, I hurried off while trying to ignore everyone's gaze. But wherever I went, those people were everywhere. On top of that, the town seemed to have no end. I could not find a road that led out, no matter how long I searched. Just as I was wondering about what to do, I recognized someone standing near a building. There you are. You had me worried. Oh, I'm sorry. I had something to take care of. That sounded oddly vague. But I didn't want to be rude, so I dropped it. She did give me a sandwich, after all. Did you have any luck finding your way back home? No, still nothing. And on top of that, there are all these weird people walking around. Actually, I know someone who may be able to help. You do? Yeah, they don't live far from here. How about I introduce you? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. How does she know someone, though? It doesn't... Okay. I'm super suspicious. Wasn't she new in this town? Maybe she met them while we were separated? That's what I'm saying. Like... Yeah, something's really not right. I considered questioning her, but this was the only lead I had found so far, and I didn't want to lose this chance. We arrived at an old, tall building. I watched May from the corner of my eye. Something seemed different about her, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Perhaps it was just my imagination. They live on the highest floor. This building's pretty old, and not many people live here anymore, so it's a bit run down. I'd appreciate it if you went first. 
I didn't protest and let us into the structure. It looks abandoned. The building was quite desolate, just as she said. This place made me feel uneasy. I didn't want to stay here any longer than I had to. Not only was I afraid that everything would come down on our heads any minute, I could only imagine what could lurk in these abandoned halls. I didn't blame her for wanting me to go first. After climbing a set of stairs, May spoke up again. It should be that door at the end of this hall. I'm so, con like, I'm so suspicious of May. I saw the door she was referring to. It was probably the only door in the entire building that wasn't damaged. The clean coat of paint was an eerie contrast in the ravaged environment. And the one living here can help me? No reply. I turned around and saw nothing. May was gone again. What? Is May, like, does she have something to do with what's happening in each version of this town? Like some sort of, not a godlike character, but something that is overseeing each of these possible realities of this town that we're going into for each chapter. <sighs> Just theory. She could have at least said goodbye. I walked up to the door to knock, but it was already open. Maybe I had the wrong door after all. Yet May had seemed certain. What should I do? Let's enter the apartment. Perhaps they forgot to lock the door, or May had already notified them that we were coming and they left it open for us. I gave the door a soft push. Hello? No reply. It was a very small apartment. The door opened to a living room, which seemed to double as the bedroom. A single corridor led to two more rooms, likely the bathroom and the kitchen. Just like the door itself, everything looked way too clean and tidy compared to the hallway outside. I stepped in and peered through a window, hoping to spot this person that I was supposed to meet. Everything looked normal from up here, but I knew that wasn't the case. Something was wrong with this town, and I was trapped here. Would I ever be able to return home? I had people who relied on me. Would my team at the lab manage without me? I tore myself away from the window. This wasn't the time to think about that. I should be concentrating on finding a way out. I thought about what to do next. I'm going to take a look around the apartment. Um, check the pictures. I took a look at the pictures hanging on the walls. Most of them were paintings that depicted nature. Only a few of them were photographs. One with a note scribbled onto it caught my eye. It depicted a man and a woman having a picnic. The note said, Sabrina and Frederick BFF. Sabrina was also from Chapter 1. It seemed like one of them was living here, or maybe both? At the very least, I would now be able to recognize the tenant once I see them. Check the desk. The surface of the desk was crammed with beauty products. A single mirror was standing amongst them. A small book was buried beneath the clutter. Check the mirror. My own reflection peered back at me. I looked like I had aged a decade. My lack of sleep had really done a number on me, not to mention all these strange occurrences today. If I ever get out of this, I will need a long vacation, I thought. As I looked in the mirror, a newspaper page hanging on the wall behind me caught my eye. I approached it and skimmed it in case it had any hints on what was going on in this town, but I was unfortunately wrong. This issue of... Kajam... Kajamath News, as the paper was called, was several years old. The subheading read, A rising new artist has wowed the judges at the Kajamath Art Competition. We can't wait to see her next work. She has a bright future ahead of her, one of the judges said. This article doesn't seem to be important to my current situation, and I couldn't see any more newspaper snippets around. Disappointed, I averted my gaze and took another look around the room. Um, I want to check the desk again, and I want to check the book. I moved the small bottles aside and picked up the book underneath. The cover depicted a mask with a distorted facial expression. Bingo. The title read, The Art of Humor. I flipped through it. It was apparently a guide by the most hilarious one that explained how to make funny faces. But the pictures in the book were more disturbing than humorous. One, descrip one description of a technique caught my eye. Finally, we arrived at addition. Like removal, this is a very risky technique reserved only for the cream of the crop. It may sound simple though. All you have to do is add and never stop. Search for features that are a disgrace to facial humor, then take them for yourself and pair them off. The person might even thank you for all your help with removal. I glanced at the pictures beside the text and shook my head in disgust. I started skimming through it quickly and sure enough, it was full of similar depictions. So we know that this book was what Frederick read in the other, or 
not in the other chapter, in this chapter, but when we were with Lanny and Amy. He read the removal and addition process. On the very last page, I came to a sudden stop. There was a key taped to it. Did the key come with the book, or did the owner of the book hide it here? Oh well, it didn't matter to me anyway, since I didn't know what the do what door the key was for. Suddenly, I heard a sound outside the apartment. There was no time to place the book back under the bottles. I stuffed it into my pocket. I hastily slipped inside a closet and carefully pulled it shut. I wasn't sure why I was hiding, but I had an awful feeling in my guts. Finding a stranger standing in your apartment probably wouldn't be something someone would take in stride. Then again, finding one in your closet would be even worse. Is that Sabrina? I watched through slits in the door as they entered the apartment. They stopped in the entryway and took a look around the room. Was this the tenant? That doesn't look like Sabrina, though. Something's Obviously, something's wrong with her face, but Sabrina was like... You know, if, for anyone that watched the first chapter, she kind of also looked like a scientist-type person. I don't know. Shadows were obscuring part of their body. I strained my eyes, trying to see what they looked like. But what I saw made me cover my mouth to suppress a gasp. What's wrong with her face? <laughs> the woman's face was ravaged. Fleshy chunks clung to her forehead. This looks nothing like Sabrina. Were those face parts? Forgot to close the door again. She spoke to herself and moved as if nothing was wrong, but her face... It was horrendous. She walked up to the mirror. This looks so much better, just like in the book. I should check the text again. I may have missed something. Oh, no. I could feel the weight of the book in my pocket. I was sure I put it here. She rummaged the desk. What? What? Where is it? I know it was here. It was here. She cast the bottles from the desk to the ground. They shattered, spilling their sickly, sweet-smelling contents across the carpet. The panic drained from her face. It's okay. It's okay. I just need to buy a new one. It's completely fine. I'll just ask the most hilarious one if he has one left over. He has to. She scurried out of the apartment, leaving the door wide open. I remained frozen in the closet for a few more minutes. My heart slowly calmed itself. Once I was sure that she was really gone, I stepped out. I needed to get myself as far away from this building and this town as fast as I possibly could. I was about to leave the apartment, but a sudden wave of fatigue came over me. It was as if... I had stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest and I tried to figure out what was going on. A throbbing pain pulsed through my arm. It was as if something had stabbed me. I tried to turn around but I had already, already become too weak. My feet gave in and my vision darkened. I could feel a presence near me. The woman? May? What happened to him? Before I could find out, my consciousness faded. And I found key number two. Okay. Still some more possibilities I want to see in this chapter, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward. Okay, we're going to enter the apartment again. But this time we're going to stay here and wait. So I waited. Suddenly I heard a sound outside the apartment. There was no time to place the book back under the bottles. I stuffed it into my pocket. Uh, is this the same result? Okay. So let's go ahead and go back in. Um, very minor difference, I guess. But let me give you guys a little glimpse of what that looks like here so as soon as the chapter starts we skip ahead it this only skips what we've already read so if there's any new text we don't skip it so we're going to enter the apartment this time we're going to take a look around and this time we're going to check the other rooms i walked down the corridor and toward the other two rooms as i suspected it was just the bathroom and the kitchen something about the bathroom caught my eye it was filled with countless beauty products scarily scarily many beauty products the shelves were overflowing. I could barely see the counter. Even the floor was littered with them. Shaking my head, I went back to the living room. Um, so I imagine... That... Same ending? Okay. So, the other possibility that we can do... Um, would be... I think checking around the apartment still could give us another result. I think we have what is the canon ending here, but let's go ahead and see. So we're going to take a look around the building first. I shouldn't barge into a stranger's home like this. The door being open didn't mean that I could just enter. My eyes wandered around the hallway, scanning it for anything notable. Maybe I could wait for them outside? I had noticed that the air here felt oddly heavy. 
I made my way back down the hallway when I heard some noise from the ground floor downstairs. Was it another tenant? Maybe they could help me. I wasn't very hopeful considering how badly it's been going so far, but it was worth a shot. Slowly, I creeped down the steps. I could make out a rhythmic, squishy sound that was getting louder and louder. An uneasy feeling was starting to set in my stomach. As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I saw a red trail on the ground. Blood. It must be blood. It led to an apartment. Its door was also wide open. My feet froze. The sound was getting louder, more frantic. So, is it the same person then? That comes into the apartment in the other uh, endings? I need to get out of this building. Something horrible was happening in there. But to get to the exit, I had to pass by that door. Past the blood trail. I considered going back up, but then I would be stuck in a dead end. My feet slowly started to move down the last couple of steps. Whoever or whatever was in that room couldn't notice me. Who knew what would happen to me if they did? The squishing became louder and louder the closer I got. Before long, I was standing right by the open door. The nameplate next to it read, Frederick Steiner. Okay. Um. Did Frederick find Lanny and Amy as well, even though I didn't take that route this time? I considered quickly running past, but my curiosity overwhelmed me. I peeked in. The room was almost pitch black. The sole window barely let any light through. I saw rhythmic movement in the middle of the room. Someone was hunched over something. As the person lifted their hand once again, I saw a metallic glint in the light. They were holding a knife. They were stabbing somebody over and over again. The techniques in the book are too simple. I don't have time for these childish games if I want to be as funny as the most hilarious one. Taking from the face? Nonsense. Why just the face? There's so much missed potential. This is exactly what my studies have been leading up to. She just doesn't get it, but I do. I think he's referencing Sabrina. There seems to be a conflict or a rivalry between Frederick and Sabrina in every single chapter. I'm a, Well, at least for the first, I imagine it will be the same in the third. I'll show her what it means to be funny. They were whispering to themselves in a gurgling voice. I had no idea what they were talking about. They must have gone mad. I stepped away, ready to leave this building for good. But my foot slipped on the wet blood. I managed to catch myself and avoid falling, but I couldn't avoid making a sound. The movement inside the room suddenly stopped. Silence. Then their head slowly turned my way. <laughs> that, oh my god. That is a hand that looks like eyeballs, intestines, lower intestines, Upper intestines. I don't know what these are. I hope they're not what I think they are. They better be cherries. <laughs> Who's there? The person frantically shook their grotesque head around. It seemed like they couldn't get see me past all of the face modifications. The various body parts fused with their skin wiggled like worms crawling out of their head. Is that you, Sabrina? Have you come to your senses? Have you finally realized that this is the only way to make an actually funny face? Look at me. Soon I will be the most hilarious one. And then, and then, his breathing was getting even heavier than before. Huh. <laughs> they went back to dismantling the body in front of them. I, I was safe. They really couldn't see me. I was safe. Yeah, they covered their eyes up. Trying not to make a sound, I stepped over the bloody trail and very cautiously made my way toward the exit. I definitely didn't want to get caught. Soon I was in front of the exit door and I could finally get out. But just as I was about to grab the handle, a sudden wave of fatigue came over me. It was as if I had stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest as I tried to figure out what was going on. A throbbing pain pulsed through my arm. It was as if something had stabbed me. I tried to turn around, but I had already become too weak. My feet gave in, and my vision darkened. I could feel a presence near me. Okay, this is the ending we already got. Okay, we finished the route of the second door. Cool, so we finished all three routes of this chapter. Alright, what do we think? The concept of this strange figure coming into a town as the most hilarious one and selling a book about how to make a funny face. And while it sounds playful and sounds, you know, kid-friendly, 
In reality, it's a book detailing awful, horrible body modifications involving killing people, um, take you know, taking parts of their face and adding it to your own to make this distorted, disgusting feature set. Really creepy concept. Really felt like a Junji Ito story through and through. And I can't wait to see what's behind door number three. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for chapter two. I love you very much. Please be safe, and I'll see you in the next one.